whole story. The president is quite vocal, especially in matters of reforms in the country's credit market. Yes. I think he is on record saying he invited himself into your event the other day when you were, were making the significant announcements, mm -hmm. especially on the defaulters and blacklisting at CRB and asking for a better way of looking at it, the, the grading method that will spare a shutdown of these defaulters from the financial system. Mm. I'm keen to ask you, what is the update on the mechanism set to be put in place uh, to repair the credit histories of these listed customers, mm. since you are the lead on the digital yes. part of yes. it? Yeah. Well, let, let me first say, I thank the president for gracing our occasion. It was, a, it was really a pleasant surprise yeah. that he agreed to be part of our part of that announcement. Okay. And um, and the reason I say that isn't just because he's a president, mm -hmm. and that is important. Yeah. It's also because I think building the economy is a responsibility of all of us. Mm -hmm. And our view is that what we do with Fuliza, what we do with them surely, lending that to millions of Kenyans who wake up in the morning to go buy potatoes and go sell, mm -hmm. and then repay that loan by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. What we did to that tailor that needs materials or is out of thread and needs to buy thread now so that to finish making their suit or your suit. Yeah. That work that we do is very important for the economy, yeah. for the MSMEs in this, in this market. So mm -hmm. having the president grace the occasion yeah. really speaks to the fact that this is an emergency for everybody to support mm -hmm. MSME. So it was a very pleasant and welcome, yeah. welcome surprise. Mm -hmm. During that time, as yeah. you say, one of the announcements we made mm -hmm. was that we will work, uh, thanks again to, uh, to initiatives some driven by the president, yeah. we'll work on a way to repair, to help customers who had been negatively listed to repair their credit. Mm -hmm. And working with our regulator, the Central Bank, and a number of, a number of other banks and, and partners like Safaricom, uh, we came up with a methodology uh, that was announced by the CBK about how we'll help these customers repair their credit. And the process is really simple. Mm -hmm. It is to say, first of all, we will list you positively. Okay. So when you hear people talk about delisting, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not take a rubber and erase <laughs> a name. Yeah? Not take a rubber and erase a name, as, as we know. Okay. Or an yeah. eraser and yeah. erase a name. is actually giving a positive list. So reset the loan mm -hmm. and report that it's actually positive. There's time to repay that loan. Yeah. That resetting of the loan, then you say you have six months yeah. to repay this loan. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you discounts. Mm -hmm for you to be able to repay this loan, which okay. was a 50% discount yeah. that was announced. Yeah. Um, and that process for us has already started. Yeah. As we announced, we have already mm -hmm. uh, delisted in quotation marks, mm -hmm. or positively listed yeah. 5 million customers that we had negatively listed, okay. who borrowed through our channels, mm -hmm. either Jewelry, Fuliza or others, that we, that we had. And now we're communicating to those customers on the process to make their payments that they need to make so that they are permanently uh, okay. positively listed as opposed to returning after six months into negative listing. Okay. Yeah. So speaking of the credit repair framework from the CBK, yes. that 50%, I was curious to ask you, are you afraid? Are you, what are you looking at in, t in terms of how will this hit you? Because, you know, there's no free lunch, but now we are talking about some guys there are going to go down with uh, some 50% saying, hey, you're released. Yeah. I think from a financial perspective, I'm not afraid at all. Okay. Because remember, these are customers who are not paying anyway. Mm -hmm. So if they came and paid 50%, it's better. It's better than nothing, <laughs> right? So actually, it's a very positive thing. Yeah? And we support it because it's, it's positive financially. But that was not the idea. And that was not the drive. Okay. The idea was that when you have that number of customers negatively listed, yeah? Yeah. Um, they are, they are locked out uh, quite a bit in the financial inclusion agenda, which we want to promote, which we want to promote, uh, yeah. and, and, and which we drive. And if that is the case, moving these customers from being negatively listed and being locked out into financial inclusion agenda, into other things where you're required to have a, a positive credit uh, yeah. you know, list before you get certain things, yeah, even thing, some absolutely. jobs they'll ask you for, having those customers then move Mm -hmm. to this side where they can benefit okay. from those uh, social offers that we have or work offers that we have or financial inclusion offers that the government has and we have. Um, it's a very positive thing. So for us, we look at it that way. Okay. It's a very, <laughs> very positive, positive thing. No, I think the, yeah. the part I would say, the fear that I would say we all have mm -hmm. is that Kenyans, we have come to expect that things will be extended. <laughs> we'll have additional time. 
I want to assure Kenyans that this yeah. is a one-time window. Yeah. If you don't repair your credit during this time window, yeah. there's no other opportunity. Okay. Take full advantage of it. You better hear that. <laughs> I think they have got a note of that. Let's move into your numbers again, but you're doing so well, especially on your NPLs. And I'm keen to understand why, because yeah. I have just seen, I mean, compared to actually equity and KCB where you're mm -hmm. uh, market players as well, you, you're leading when it comes to these matters. What are you doing right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think there, there are a number of things. Okay. <laughs> One was that, uh, you know, our NPLs has to be, you can look at it as a standalone number. Today's number, I think you have to like to look at it as a trend number. Mm -hmm. Where we were in 2020 and where yeah. we are today. Mm -hmm. In 2020, we were probably the highest. Yeah. yeah. I think we reported an NPL ratio of as high as 17%. Absolutely. And we have come down to today's number mm -hmm. of 13.2, yeah. which is lower than 13.7 that you see in the market. Mm -hmm. So it's a trend, yeah. that, but it's a trend that has required a lot of work and that we we'll continue to work at. Okay. And that work has been a lot of resolution, working with customers mm -hmm. to resolve uh, their issues. Yeah? Yeah. Either we agree, let's recover the collateral that you have, mm -hmm. or let's restructure your loan, mm -hmm. reset it, and they have shown performance. Absolutely. And once you show performance for a period of time, then you're moved back into performance. Mm -hmm. So, so those, are, those are some of the things that we have done very well. Wow. We could go on and on and on yes. because there's a lot of sectors we could touch on. But yes. let me now touch on your end because you are the current chair at the Kenya Bankers Association, yes. Yes, which is a, quite a, a big seat to sit on. And you know, a lot of SMEs would want to know what is the driving force that you have, especially in the macro environment and even the micro, especially for the SMEs in mm -hmm. terms of uh, supporting them to unlock more credit? It would be important to hear from you and whether there's anything they offer. Yes. So, so I think uh, a number of things. Yeah. And this is something we discuss a lot as banks yeah. and obviously it's something that is very close to our regulator as well. So mm -hmm. we discuss quite a bit about how to support SMEs. Yeah. And as you recall, Mina, last year we worked with government to come up with a credit guarantee yeah. for SMEs mm -hmm. where we are lending to SMEs. And the last check I did, we had lent to SMEs, not just us, as banks, SMEs across in every country in this, in this country. We have lent to SMEs those credit guaranteed loans yeah. mm -hmm. and working with government to do so. Yeah. Um, and that was a project that we worked together. Uh, many banks have come up with, you know, innovations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, digital innovations to support yeah. these SMEs. Mm -hmm. And that's something else that we talk about quite mm -hmm. a bit. I think the risk-based pricing yeah. uh, was developed as a way to ensure that we don't overly penalize SMEs and small business mm -hmm. uh, in terms of pricing, was to say, please understand the credit risk that you face a lot better. Mm -hmm. Because in this country, what happens is that large corporates are able to get really good rates. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> However, SMEs, unfortunately, are treated as if they're, you know, yeah. <laughs> they're very risky. Absolutely. So the risk-based pricing model was supposed mm -hmm. to accommodate those SMEs yeah. so they don't get heavily penalized at the expense, sorry, at the expense so that we, they're subsidizing these large, large mm. corporates. Mm. Finally, sir, I know because time is not on our end. What's on your crystal ball, especially regionally thinking, back to now the bank, yes. uh, regionally thinking, mm. and you know, now you're headed, you're in the last quarter now. Yes. What are you seeing? Look, I think um, I talked about inflation, uh, cost of living. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked about all the downsides that we see. Yeah. Uh, but I, there are a lot of positives. One is change of government uh, here in Kenya. That yeah. was very smooth. Yeah. I think uh, Kenya continuing or continuing to play a more significant role in regional matters. Yeah. I think we have seen the former president in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. in DRC. Yeah. Uh, we have seen our own uh, president sending mm -hmm. KDF into into DLC, yeah. just the role that Kenya is playing mm -hmm. is getting bigger and bigger in the region. That bodes well for business. Absolutely. Because these, these, these countries, the moment they are stable, mm -hmm. they are export markets for our country. Yeah. So again, uh, I think quite, uh, quite exciting. Mm -hmm. The actions that the central bank has taken, uh, yeah. both Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, where they are tightening monetary supply or using physical means to ensure that they contain cost of living and inflation, I see those coming through towards the half to the second half of next year. Yeah. And again, those board wealth for the stability of the economy. And lastly, I think what the US, the UK and others are doing, um, it's the US especially, where the dollar has been strengthening for quite some time, but now it's starting to weaken mm -hmm. and the inflation is starting to come down. Mm -hmm. Again, speaks well to the fact that we may see uh, the dollar um, scarcity yeah. uh, start to ebb. And as that happens, 
then we'll be able to those effects numbers that we're making will disappear. However, yeah. at least businesses will be able to perform the way they should. All so right. I see a lot of a lot of balls, not just one, many, many balls, but mm -hmm. if you put them all together, what we are looking at for next year, because we're going through our planning season now, we are quite we remain quite bullish, at least for NCBA. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'd say finally, yeah. CBR is going up. Should borrowers be worried? Um, they should not be worried. Okay. They should be worried because you know it's it's a, one gets worried if they look at something only from their corner. Okay, but if you look at it, hold something. Hold something. Yeah, the CBR is going up. It needs to be transmitted into the market. So that's okay. where the borrowers may get hit because rates will go up. Mm -hmm. uh, and rates have already started going up. Rates will go up. But what will happen is that then they will control inflation and the cost of living, on the other hand, will come down. So you may pay a bit more to the bank, okay. but pay a bit less to buy Unga. <laughs> that's that's an interesting way of almost ending yes. this conversation exactly. because I can't end without talking about your share. Yes. I mean, uh, I've just got an information because I asked mm. and your share capital has been, I mean, your share value has been growing. Yes. Uh, I think early in the year, I'm told you were at ranges of 24. Now you're playing around 31, 32. Mm. You have to tell the shareholders, what's the good news? <laughs> I think, look, uh, it's, we have always said that uh, share pricing yes. responds to returns, mm -hmm. responds to performance. Absolutely. I think as you started by saying, our yes. performance has been very strong yeah. and net profit double. Uh, year over year, I think very, very strong performance. Um, and that really speaks to the fact that we, at the end of the day, realize we work for shareholders. We must deliver to them as employees, as a board, uh, our conversation about what are we delivering to shareholders. Mm -hmm. uh, we give very healthy dividends that we have done before. Yeah. Um, and I think last time you all asked me about dividends, I said we will demonstrate yeah. that our view is that if we cannot find somewhere else to invest for the same returns that we're getting, we will give that money to shareholders and tell them you're probably better at investing your money than we are because you haven't come up with a strategy to invest your money. So we'll continue to give here the dividends and that's of course the opportunities to make those investments. And I think that is what uh, the share price is responding to. Wow. John Gashar, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Just Thanks. remember, last time I was in the office, I couldn't shake your hand because COVID was no, so... No, it was COVID, huh? We had to do it together from Mugu, yeah? <laughs> All right, there you have it. John Gashara, uh, MD at NCBA Group, really unpacking for us the numbers at Q3. And of course, they deserve a pat in the back, you know, looking at how the environment has been. And we want to really push them harder and tell them, you know what, as shareholders, I know you are asking, let's keep going, of course. Uh, and we want to appreciate the work that they have done. That has been our time here at the Trading Bell. We want to leave you right now with the markets.